Thanks, Dr. Antman. Um, it's a pleasure to present the key results from the Dal Outcomes trial, and the title of the presentation is Effects of Cholesterol Ester Trans Transfer Protein Inhibitor Dalcetropib in Patients with Recent Acute Coronary Syndrome. For decades, observational analyses have told us that higher levels of HDL cholesterol are associated with lower cardiovascular risk. But what has remained uncertain to the present time is whether raising HDL cholesterol therapeutically reduces cardiovascular risk. One of the targets for raising HDL cholesterol is cholesterol ester transfer protein, or CETP. And it's been hypothesized that raising HDL cholesterol by inhibiting CETP might reduce cardiovascular risk. Dalcetropib was developed as a CETP inhibitor that raises HDL cholesterol by about 30 percent, did so in phase two trials, and did so in phase two trials without effect on blood pressure or neurohormones, which were problematic with torcetropib, a prior CETP inhibitor. So the objective of the DAL outcomes trial was to compare the effects of dalcetropib with placebo when added to evidence-based background therapy on cardiovascular risk in patients with recent acute coronary syndrome, in other words, very high-risk coronary heart disease patients. Um, in addition to having um, an acute coronary syndrome, to qualify for this trial, the patients had to have evidence-based management of their LDL cholesterol, which involved statins and diet, but there was no specific statin regimen that was prescribed, uh, nor was there any um, elimination of patients based on the LDL level that was achieved, and there was no restriction on patients according to their baseline HDL cholesterol levels. This is, is a schematic of how the trial was designed. Uh, the patients were identified at the time of their ACS, acute coronary syndrome event. They spent four to 12 weeks in a single blind placebo run-in period to make sure that uh, their adherence was good and that uh, they met all inclusion criteria for the trial. Then they were randomized, followed um, in the design of the trial until 1,600 primary endpoint events had occurred, but with two pre-specified interim analyses that included analysis for futility. And the trial was conducted in 27 countries in nearly 1,000 sites. The primary outcome measure was a composite of coronary heart disease death, non-fatal myocardial infarction, ischemic stroke, and hospitalization for unstable angina, and cardiac arrest with resuscitation. At the second of the two pre-specified interim analyses, when 1,135 primary endpoint events were available for review by the Data Safety Monitoring Board. They recommended that the trial be terminated for futility, and that recommendation was accepted by the sponsor and the steering committee, and the trial was terminated um, at a point where there was median follow-up of 31 months. The baseline characteristics of the patients are shown here. It's pretty much as expected in an acute coronary syndrome population. Majority of patients were Caucasian and male. Majority had a history of hypertension and metabolic syndrome, and about a quarter had diabetes or were current smokers. These were patients who were very well treated with evidence-based uh, therapies in the background of uh, study treatment. 91% of the patients underwent PCI or bypass surgery for the index event. 97% were treated with aspirin and statins, nearly 90% with a second antiplatelet agent, nearly 90% with a beta blocker, and nearly 80% with an ACE inhibitor or an ARB. At baseline, at the time of randomization, the mean LDL cholesterol in this population was 76 milligrams per deciliter, HDL 42, triglycerides 134 milligrams per deciliter, again indicating that the control of LDL cholesterol was good in these patients. This slide shows the changes in HDL and LDL 
cholesterol levels with assigned treatment. You can see that dalcetropib increased HDL cholesterol by approximately 30 percent over the course of the trial and had minimal effect on the levels of LDL cholesterol. So this is, a, is an experiment, clinical experiment, that helps to separate out the effects of influencing HDL cholesterol from simultaneous um, influence on LDL cholesterol. And this slide shows the primary outcome of, this, of the trial by treatment group. You can see that uh, there was no effect of dalcetropib treatment on the risk of the primary composite endpoint. The hazard ratio was 1.04. It corresponded to a p-value of 0.52. In addition to the neutral effects on the primary composite endpoint shown in the first line of this table, there were neutral effects on every component of the primary endpoint listed below, as well as neutral effects on all-cause mort mortality and coronary revascularization. So there was no signal, no, no significant signal of an effect on any of these types of cardiovascular events. So why did dalcetropib fail to reduce risk? One explanation is shown in this slide, which plots the annual risk of the primary outcome event on the vertical axis by quintiles of baseline HDL cholesterol on the horizontal axis, shown in black for placebo and red for dalcetropib. And the con conclusion here is that there was no association between the baseline level of HDL cholesterol and the subsequent risk of these patients. So with that knowledge, it's not surprising, perhaps, that an intervention that raised HDL cholesterol did not influence the cardiovascular risk. Another potential explanation is that dalcetropib caused small but significant changes in systolic blood pressure, shown in the top graph, and in C-reactive protein, shown in the bottom graph, uh, both in an apparently adverse direction. So the difference in systolic blood pressure over the course of the study was about 0.6 millimeters mercury, and the difference in C-reactive protein on the right side of the bottom graph measured after three months of assigned treatment was 0.2 milligrams per liter, so a small difference, but with this many patients, it was highly significant. So to conclude, uh, in patients with recent acute coronary syndrome, dalcetropib raised HDL cholesterol by about 30 percent, had minimal effect on LDL, and had no effect on the risk of major cardiovascular events. HDL did not predict risk in this population, and slightly higher systolic blood pressure in CRP with dalcetropib might reflect an adverse effect of inhibiting CETP. Um, and the trial will be available online in the New England Journal uh, tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Schwartz. <clears throat> To uh, discuss the Dell Outcomes paper, I'd like to call upon Dr. Alan Tall from Columbia University in New York. Uh, thank, thanks, Dr. Antman. Um, uh, so this was a well-conducted study with a disappointing outcome. Uh, I believe that the decision to stop the trial prematurely was rational, um, and I'd like to uh, expand on potential reasons for the uh, for the failure to show benefit. Um, the first one alluded to already by Dr. Schwartz is that moderate HDL elevation in patients already optimally treated with statins and other agent may not have an impact on coronary disease. Uh, this explanation is uh, supported by the lack of relationship of HDL concentration to clinical outcome in the present study, both baseline HDL and also on treatment HDL uh, failed to show a relationship in this study. Um, this was similar to uh, some other studies, for example, the Jupiter study, uh, where HDL uh, was not found to have predictive value in patients uh, treated with potent statins to a very low LDL level. <coughs> the, the findings are also consistent with the AIM High study that was reported uh, uh, recently uh, using extended release niacin in which 15% elevation in HDL cholesterol appeared not to affect the primary endpoint in patients treated to low LDL levels. This would also be consistent with one of the major theories from basic science that HDL's benefit really 
is to reverse the effects of an atherogenic stimulus. That is, that a high level of bad cholesterol and its effects on cells may be necessary to see an effect of the so-called good cholesterol. Based on preclinical studies, however, as well as studies in which large amounts of cholesterol-poor HDL, uh, reconstituted HDL, was infused into acute coronary syndrome patients, uh, some uh, in the field had the expectation that increasing HDL would actually cause regression of atherosclerosis associated with a clinical benefit. Um, so since that expectation was not met, it's possible that more dramatic HDL elevation or different kinds of HDL with different properties uh, may need to be uh, raised by treatment to enhance functionality and thus produce regression and clinical benefit. The second explanation um, would be that CTP inhibition may produce a form of HDL that doesn't work properly, that it's dysfunctional. Uh, for example, one of the main properties of HDL is thought to be involved in reverse cholesterol transport from cells in the artery through the blood and back to the liver. However, studies using HDL from subjects treated with CTP inhibitors or genetically deficient suggest that HDL is effective in mediating macrophage cholesterol efflux. But in vivo, in the whole person or animal, plasma CTP is involved in HDL remodeling and in mediating an indirect pathway of reverse cholesterol transport in plasma. It's not clear whether CTP inhibition increases overall reverse cholesterol transport in these basic studies. Limited animal studies carried out with dalcetropib did suggest some increase in transport of cholesterol from macrophages to feces. Overall, however, we must conclude that the impact of CTP inhibition by dalcetropib on HDL function remains uncertain, and the results of dal outcomes suggest any benefit was at best modest. The third explanation, uh, alluded to again by Dr. Antman, I beg your pardon, by Dr. Schwartz, uh, would be the potential benefit of lipoprotein changes may have been outweighed by some other effect, in particular a slight increase in blood pressure of 0 0.6 millimeters mercury. Although this blood pressure elevation is very minor in amount, it potentially could indicate an underlying adverse vascular effect of CTP inhibition. And one must be concerned in this regard because blood pressure increases were also seen with a structurally distinct CTP inhibitor, torcetropib, that failed in the Illuminate trial, uh, raising the possibility of an adverse class effect. However, in another study, in 808 high-risk patients, another CTP inhibitor, a potent inhibitor, in the defined study uh, did not cause any elevation in blood pressure, and a fourth inhibitor called evacetropib in phase two studies also has not shown elevation of blood pressure. In addition, mutations or polymorphisms in CTP genes, uh, in the CTP gene, are not associated with increased blood pressure. So genetically reducing CTP and raising HDL does not cause an increase in blood pressure. Uh, together, this information suggests that the slight increase in blood pressure does not represent a class effect, but this cannot finally be ruled out. The small increase in CRP that was described of about 18 percent is a slight increase uh, within the normal range, uh, but again, similar increases in CAP were reported in another CTP inhibitor study in the defined study with anisotropin. This could be an indicator of underlying vascular or metabolic inflammation. Uh, also, CRP is sensitive to small changes in body weight, and thus subtle changes in body mass index could perhaps be involved. In my opinion, the clinical significance of such a small increase in CRP is questionable. Finally, my last point would be that dalcetropib is only a partial, relatively weak CTP inhibitor and may have been insufficiently potent to provide benefit in this particular setting. In this regard, high-level inhibition of CTP with potent inhibitors or complete genetic deficiency produces about 120 percent increases in HDL levels and also HDL particles that are qualitatively different, large and APOE rich. 
High level inhibition, importantly, is also associated with decreases in LDL cholesterol, lowering of ApoB, and lowering of LP little a. All of these are atherogenic particles. These potentially beneficial effects were not seen with dalcetriptyl. In conclusion, ongoing phase three clinical studies with potent CTP inhibitors, anisetropib in the reveal study, and evacetropib in the accelerate study, will test the hypothesis that high level CTP inhibition reduces atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk. Thank you.